Hi, my name is Chad Adams. I work with Skelton Key in St. Louis, Missouri, and this is the first video in a series of videos we're going to do on the number functions. The first function we're going to look at is the absolute value function. When you're using the ABS function, you enter a number as the parameter, and it's going to return to you the absolute value of whatever number you enter. For example, if I enter 3, we'll see 3, and if I enter a negative 3, we'll still get 3. Do negative 6, and we'll still get 6. So I can also enter um, some sort of a calculation here if I would want to. So I could do something like um, 5 minus 15, and it'll do the math for me, and then return the absolute value of that answer. So in this case, 5 minus 15 would be negative 10, and it returns the result 10. The next function I want to look at is the ceiling function. The ceiling function is going to return the next highest number um, next highest whole number to whatever number you enter. For example, if I were to enter um, 3.75, then it's going to return 4. And if I were to enter um, 3.25, it would return 4. So unlike rounding, where when you get to uh, 3.5, it would round up to um, 4, in this case, no matter how far above 3 you are, it's going to round up to 4. Okay, that can be a tad confusing if you're using negative numbers. If I do negative 1.25, I'm going to get negative 1 because it's going to get the next highest number. So negative 1 is a bigger number than negative 1.25. The last function we're going to talk about in this video is the combination function. Let's take a look at that. So the combination is going to let you enter two parameters. The first one is the size of the set and the second one is the number of choices. And what it's going to do for you is it's going to take um, the number of the size, so let's say I had uh, four items here, and it's going to give me the number of combinations possible given how many of those items I want in my set. So if I were to say two here, then it's going to tell me I've got six possibilities. So um, the way you would use this it usually would be in something like statistics or something, um, but also, if, I don't know about you, but I've had to do things where I'm trying to figure out how many different ways um, something can go together. Um, so for example, if I had items A, B, C, and D, and then you start doing things like A, B, A, C, A, D, and A, B, C, A, C, D, and then you do things like A, B, C, D, and then you start over and you go um, B, C, and B, D, and you're just trying to figure out what are all the possible ways these four letters can go together with each other. And, and then you, you count up how many they are and then you know how many possible combinations there are. Um, one way you can do the combination thing is you could say um, four items with combination one and I can get four instances of that. And if I do combination two, there's six variations there. And three, there'd be four. And then four, there'd be one. And so I could do something like combination 4, 1 plus combination 4, 2 com plus combination 4, 3 plus combination 4, 4, and it would give me the total number of ways that those four letters could go together. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, learned something about the number functions. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at chad.adams at Thanks a lot. Bye.